we are currently all still stuck in Brazil, and uh, things are actually not looking so well here. But in spite of all the challenges, I think we have achieved something quite remarkable that we would like to share here. We are kind of tired of what is going on. We have all a lot of things to do. As we build ventilators, we have to deliver ventilators. But one of my colleagues will tell you soon a little bit more about that. So in, in, in theory, we should be actually be stuck at this building here at the moment. But of course, some of us are at home, and we only rarely we can access this building. But this is where the main research for this project and the main production for this project is going on. It's a CT building, the Centro Interdisciplinarity Technologias Interactivas at the University of Sao Paulo campus. And so the two persons who are there, you can now see here in, in the video. So with me, there is also Marcelo. So Marcelo, if you can just kind of give us a little wave into the camera and Liza also kind of give a little wave Hello. here into the camera. <laughs> Hello. And um, so I'm here in this project as, in my role as the Caninos Locus Ambassador. I'm also, as you see, uh, academically in this realm of working with hardware and software, but I got in touch with the people who work with the hardware producer, the Caninos Locus Group here in Brazil. And so as you see, we have here two of the main heads who are working there. So you see here in the middle, Marcelo Zufo, who is one of the founders of the Caninos Locus Group and is the project coordinator in this project we are presenting to you today, and also a professor at the Electrical Engineering Department at the University of Sao Paulo. And then we have Liza costa Gyasi, who is the Caninos Locus Chief Scientist and she's also the research and development coordinator at LSI Tech uh, in Sao Paulo in Brazil. So thank you for having both of you here. And so I've been already talking about Caninos Locos a lot of in this uh, little start. And here you see kind of one of the first products coming out of Caninos Locos. Some of you who are active in the hardware scene might have heard of our Labrador here on the right hand side. It's a single board computer, which is not only targeting makers, but also uh, industry. and you see uh, it is modular, so there's some great thought which went into there, and there has been a lot of focus on open hardware and open software uh, in the design of this board. But there's also a microcontroller, that's the Pulga or Flea, uh, that you see here on the left side, uh, which also has its root in the Caninos Locus group. And both of these boards and the experience we have built up with these boards lead to the main and the core project we want to share here today in our presentation. I will now hand over to Marcelo, who is the real expert, and can you tell more about how the ventilator was created? Okay, thank you, Uli. It's been a challenge for us working this project since the very early stages of the pandemic in 2020. In fact, our concerns about the pandemic started early in January, since we have a major tech conference in Las Vegas, CES, we have the IEEE conference in consumer technologies. And at that moment, experts, engineers, professors, scientists at this conference, we start to become aware and very concerned about the situation that started mainly in China. Many professors from China at that moment didn't attend the conference. So we come, we come back to Brazil, quite concerned, worried. We start to do early discussions. And then the first wave badly hit Europe, North America, and then that was very scary. We we are really worried. And then by 15 March, uh, professors at USP start to join together efforts to do something related to ventilators. At that moment, we had a global movement of people, makers, universities designing emergency ventilators, and we have been approached by Professor Raul Lima. Raul is a expert on lung physiological dynamics. So he was the guy who really understand how to design a ventilator from scratch. And that was the inventory that we had started on 19 March. So what is a mechanical ventilator? A ventilator is a kind of equipment that is the only resource that we have to treat COVID. Because COVID has a secondary condition that we call ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome. And the only way to treat this killing secondary condition is using ventilator. We should say that a significant amount of people that is dying from COVID worldwide, people are dying under this condition of being intubated using ventilators. So suddenly ventilators became a fundamental piece of hardware to treat people. And it's a very hard system to design. It's, it's a very critical one because any failure, any bug can lead for the patient death. And worse than that, 
is highly certified. Certification agencies across the globe, Euro, Asia, FDA in US, and Brazilian certification agencies are really, really careful about making this equipment available in society. In fact, in Brazil, like US, it is a crime that leads to 10 years in jail, the improper design, testing, and use of ventilators without certification. So considering this situation, we decided to build a ventilator that should be low cost for emergency situations. When we say emergency, is when we observe collapses, health system collapses. Uh, we need to consider contingency scenarios where ventilators are not fully available to everyone. And also, we, we should consider this pandemic economy that is similar to a war time economy, where we, let, we have logistic pitfalls, material shortages, embargoes, politics, corruption, and all other associated problems that will block citizens having access to this equipment. So uh, in our project from scratch, using very common and widely available maker technologies, laser cutters, 3D printers, and open source platforms, in less than 120 days, and Liza will properly talk more about that, we had designed more than seven boards in several configurations because we're pursuing the certification and also including requisites in real time. We basically said, uh, we are flying, building the plane. But we are very fortunate because in around 100 days from scratch, we have a fully certified device. So which are our design assumptions? The first assumption that we have is that eventually we will not have compressed air in remote and poorest areas of Brazil and South America. So INSPIRE is a ventilator that can generate compressed air by itself. We like to have a low cost product, robust, biocompatible, very fast to manufacture, off the shelf components, easy maintenance, fully certified by our Ministry of Health, fully validated in terms of functionality because again, when we plug this ventilator on a human, that is again, the only source of life for a given patient. If I would like to repeat, if the ventilator stops in a few minutes, the patient will die immediately. We need to work on very hard operation condition, 24 hour days for 15 days or more, and as much we can, but we need to observe the local regulation. We need to keep this project using open hardware and open project. So in our case, we did a, what we call a cyber physical approach. We did an adaptation of what we call a manual resuscitator, or usually we call AMBU. AMBU is a close artificial representation of the human's lung. So if we can have precise algorithms that can deliver exactly the amount of air and oxygen to the human's lung and remove CO2, we can keep life sustained and we can eventually cure the patient because then we can observe uh, what we call the lung's dynamic complexity. The concept that we had was very simple. We just have an embu compressed by a high precision digital step motor using micro steps because again, the lung is very, very sensible. We have precise sensors. We have a touch screen and that's it. Everything else is plastic, aluminum, and 3D printing parts. So here is our maturity level evolution from scratch in 15 March. By August, we had approval. And in October, we start fabrication distribution. We go through all certification steps. So we try it up on animals, pigs, and also we try it up on humans. We just complete another round of trial where we tested the ventilator again up on 40 patients in our clinical hospital. So here is the technical specs of version B that was certified. So we have independent buttons, we have seven touch screen, we have on off buttons. We can drive inspired by automotive batteries. Yes, you can grab the nearby truck or car, plug in the inspired, and the inspired will work for several hours. Minimum requirement using motorcycle batteries is two hours. At this moment, our team is embedding a new battery that can operate the ventilator for eight hours. And Liza team, need to adapt these functional requisites every day. Every day we have a new thing to modify. So that is version B. And then based on our lessons, distributing ventilators around, especially with nurses, intensive care units across the whole country, we did version C. That is a little, looks a bit more like an Apple iPhone, 
is much more soft. We have round surfaces and it's much easier to clean it. But we did more and Liza will exploit that a bit better. But version C, we have Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, LoRaWAN, AGL7, and local AI support. So at this moment, we have distributed up to date 147 ventilators entirely in the whole Brazil. We joke that we are the seven cavalry because we used to arrive when there is absolutely no another resource. Basically, the distribution that we show it to you here is the Collapse Health System map of Brazil. Thank you very much to you, Marcelo. I think when I first saw this project, I was so impressed. And I think there's so much knowledge in so short time reflected in there. And I can't wait to hear from Liza about the future and where this is going. Yeah, the, the situation here in Brazil is, is really complicated now. And we are having this big pressure in order to deliver the, the ventilators as soon as possible. We could deliver already around 150, but we have plans to deliver 1,000. And our design team now is uh, improving the production and test procedures in order to have shorter manufacturing time. But relating to the evolution of the project, we, we have a roadmap and regarding the evolution of Penino's Locus program as well. We, we have been working in improving the system software reliability in many ways. One of our efforts, for example, is to simplify the software update mechanism, what will help us to have this shorter production time and updating the system uh, more easily. Regarding the hardware evolution, what we have now with our ventilator is a license from our health agency that is for emergency and transitory use. Next step is to apply for medical equipment class A that we can use in hospitals and medical equipment class B that is required for use in domestic or on domestic environments and in ambulances. You can see here some requirements for these certifications. Uh, what we have to evolve in order to get class A and B is to have a more complete case of ventilation modes and to be more reliable to electromagnetic interferences and also to have less uh, electromagnetic emissions. I'm showing here the level of emissions that is allowed in each class and our current emissions and our goal is on the other image where we are not passing above these lines. And we have already reviewed projects for this and now here is this new board and we are doing the, the tests and evaluations in this week. So it's, it's going right now, a little bit slower because of this pressure to produce the ventilators, but we are still going on with this, this line. Other evolution that we have in mind is to make the ventilator connected. So Inspiri is ready to be fully connected in a variety of technologies. It will allow to explore big data processing to develop more efficient treatments. We, we are planning to use artificial intelligence to analyze the relationship of ventilator configurations, drugs used, the patient profile, and how the disease is evolving. And it may extract valuable information for fighting the disease in the future. So this is one important line that we are working for next step in, in the ventilator. And regarding the Caninos Locus evolution, we have a complete roadmap. So we have higher performance platforms, always focusing on the edge computing, but still with more capability. We, we have some that are more focused for artificial intelligence, but the, the most exciting project that we are conducting now is about developing our chipset for Puga. That is our low power, low cost and autonomous platform. So we are doing it. And we believe it will be a great advantage for the, the program and to use in the Internet of Things. Liza, thanks so much. I think the future still looks challenging, but the future looks also like it is worth kind of digging into these challenges. And I think we have already proven that you have the capability to shape the future in the way you are envisioning it. I think everybody here, including me, will wish you a lot of luck in moving on. I'm looking forward to work with you in the future again. But of course, we are presenting here at FOSS Asia 
to disseminate what we are doing here. So do we want to actually reach out and get, of course, input from the community because building the community around this and impacting the world is one of our goals. Thank you for staying with us until this point. And we will have some time now to answer some questions directly. But the administration of Fourth Asia has ensured us that we also have a public room where you guys can continue asking us what is going on or getting in touch with us. But even if you don't manage there to get in touch with us, so please kind of go to Caninos Locos, join and follow us there. Uh, we are reporting news there when we get some time to actually do that. If you want to promote us, then of course, that is also very welcome and uh, everything helps here. And maybe when we beat the pandemic, there will be chances of actually meeting in person. And we would, of course, encourage you after reaching out to us or if you happen to be on an academic exchange, either in Brazil or Estonia, to get in touch with us. Or if you are a company that is interested in what we are doing, then, of course, we are also very interested in industrial connections for the future. Yeah, if you can't manage to set it up now in the questions or in the talk, please reach out to these contact addresses here and set up a virtual coffee with us or suggest a project and get in touch. And let's hope that this was not the last time that we see us, but just the first. And we will have many more meetings in this community again in the future. All right, thank you very much. Uh, um, forgot to say that uh, Ulrich uh, is uh, Caninus Locos Ambassador and Software Engineer Professor at the University of Tartu in Estonia. Marcelo is uh, Caninus Locos Founder and Inspire Project Coordinator Professor at Electrical Engineering at University of Sao Paulo, Brazil. And Liza is an R&D Coordinator at LSE Tech in Sao Paulo in Brazil and Programma Canino Locos Chief Scientist. Um, let's have a, a like we have some time for questions. Uh, so let's go with the, there was a first question on the on the chat asking if you guys can can explain a little bit more on on what are the different parts and how they work together. Yeah, I think it would be best if uh, Marcelo directly talks about it. Uh, so Marcelo, if you unmute yourself, can you kind of say something about the components again? Uh, that are making up that you still are muted. Okay, uh, thank you. Well, we, we try to keep the system very simple. We basically have four parts: display, where we show what we call the breath maps, so uh, we can display the breathing curves oxygen level frequency basically that are the three parameters it seems to be simple but the lung is very fragile any mistake pumping air to the human lung can create severe damage that can lead for infection too so uh, but anyway we have the display uh, the second part is the step motor that pumps pressure the embo we decide to use step motors because they are really precise and this precision is also important to generate the correct curves then we have the single board computer we are using caninos locus we can eventually use another single board computer eventually arduinos and others and in this single board computer uh, we have also precision uh, air sensors, 12-bit high speed. So these sensors, they close the loop. So we pump air, we measure the lung response. So uh, basically that are the, the parts on the ventilator. Then uh, the critical thing is the software behind. Uh, the software uh, implements a unique uh, closed loop control techniques that we will publish sometime. And these closed loop techniques are related to the lung physiology. And that came from experts uh, on lung physiology down here. But in overall speaking, the system is very simple. Four parts, display, step motor, 
uh, Ambu and computer. All pieces together. Um, Ulrich, I think you're muted. There are more questions I see here. So, um, uh, are you moderating them, or are we? Just yeah, yeah. So I think uh, Roland has a question he wants to ask. Uh, yeah, this is uh, the sort of open source collaboration question. Um, have any other projects picked up your design, your software, uh, and used them in their own environment? For example, seeking certification from their own regulator. Yeah, that's something that um, makes us a, a little bit uh, disappointed because the regulation here is very, very strong. Uh, for example, um, improper management design of ventilators give 10 years of jail. So the regulation is really, really strict. So uh, we have an understanding from the legal department of the university that if someone do an improper copy uh, of the ventilator design and someone die, uh, the original authors are the main, um, the main responsibles for that. So... Um, not not the person uh, who made the copy and used it, the designers. The designers, because the designers got the certification. So what we did, uh, we start to limit the access of the project to a, a closer community, a partnership with us. Um, and under the hurry of delivering the ventilators, because we, we, we are, at this moment, we have probably in Brazil uh, 300 people using the ventilators. Uh, yesterday, for example, I spent the whole day in the Nav Navy base here. We are trying to produce more 50 ventilators. So uh, we have this aware of not having professors being jailed here because <laughs> we are being almost jailed in October. You know, companies seeing our open movement start to consider switching us. Uh, and that means that in 24 hours, we can be jailed for eight years. So uh, that is the thing that we need to, in, I, I'm insisting on this. Thank you for this question, Roland. Um, we never designed something so critical in terms of life sustaining. And when we opened this door, we had discovered that uh, the environment is very strict related to certification. Somehow that is understood because we are saving lives. Uh, and when we turn the ventilator, that is the only thing that is sustaining life of someone. So if there is a bug or anything, uh, you kill the people, you kill the person. But also there are secondary liabilities related potential damage that you can do to someone's lung. So because uh, what we call class C human sustaining critical devices, that is the certification that we got, law is very strict. And law somehow clashes with our vision of open source. I'm a super advocate of open source. But they came to me in October and said, hey, professors, you have two options. Uh, you can be jailed, and that could be happen very soon, because some commercial companies are blaming that you guys are doing something open source, and that is not proper. Or we momentarily closed it. At this moment, we have 250 volunteers and the project is open to all these guys. But we passed away the message that we have this uh, legal situation. Uh, as soon as these things uh, tend to calm down, 
we want to address it again to see if we can modify the law to allow uh, um, more open stuff in this arena. Anyone who is getting in touch with us, hospitals, uh, uh, research departments of some companies, we are talking openly about that. But we cannot put in the public domain because if that happens and someone do an improper use of the ventilator and someone die or get hurt, the guys who got the final certification in our federal agency could be um, could be jailed. Well, I think that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> good. Good luck. I think that was the, the most core question that can be asked here, and I think one of the main reasons why we are here at Foz Asia, because I think only this community and only with this outreach, we can in the future address such questions. Because we, if we want open hardware to make an impact, we have to address these questions uh, at one point. And so if you guys have ideas, contacts uh, to move that forward, please follow up with us. and. Uh, profit from our experience but also let us profit from from your experience there i'll offer one observation before i move my face from the, the session uh, a very similar problem exists with uh tools that are doing things that encroach into legal advice so a friend runs a startup in computational law and there's always this risk that a thing that produces a a template contract, for example, might be something that somebody argues was legal advice and therefore that they relied on it and this caused bankruptcy, not death, thankfully, but, you know, caused a bankruptcy and they then want to go back and sue the people who published the template or who published the tool that populates the template. And so there's, fortunately, this has been going on on the internet for decades, there's a gradually evolving understanding of the difference between someone publishing a thing which is a sort of legal tool versus someone taking on professional obligation to say, I am a licensed professional in this area, I have examined your case, you have retained me as counsel, and under those three conditions, I advise you X. So to maintain that separation has been the answer for a lot of legal tech. To make absolutely clear that the thing that looks like a thing that the basis of lawyer does not, you still need legal advice to rely on, I suspect that something similar may apply in your situation, but it's you know, a large, complicated animal, and it's not just money, it's lives. So there's reason for conservatism, I accept that. I'll yield the floor, because I know there's at least other questions to come, and I'm not the moderator, so thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question, Roland. And yeah, this is a very interesting topic. We could go on and on on it. Um, and it's very nice that you guys are addressing it. Um, there's a lot of excitement here. There's a lot of people, uh, Kelvin Tan saying this is uh, very inspiring, amazing, uh, the speed of the product in, in iterations and design. And then there's another question asking, can you give an insight of why features like Bluetooth and uh, local uh, AI supports and version C of the ventilator are actually needed? Don't they make uh, the challenge of power management harder? Yeah, um, that is a very nice question. Uh, thank you also. Um, one thing that we learn, unfortunately, uh, people using ventilators, uh, unfortunately, die. And we do believe that happens because the, the health team, sometimes, they need a remote support to proper ventilate a patient. So uh, we enhance our ventilator with a lot of uh, connectivity features like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, high-speed internet, because we are moving on towards collecting data from the ventilators for big data and AI analysis. So that is exactly the point where our research teams are working at this moment. We are commissioning a super server at USP, and very soon we hope to start to collect this data. We do believe that in future, 
eventually AI will help tuning the parameters of the ventilator to save more lives. That's why we have all these kind of connectivity features. We put Bluetooth, LoRa, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and GPS. Thank you. Nice, thank you very much. Um, there's also a question saying there was a talk of using diving masks in ventilators where face mask parts are unavailable. Is that a possibility? Have you guys considered using um, diving, diving, mask, diving masks? Not sure. Is, is that even? Well, uh, when we design our ventilator here, we are on economy of war. So most of the, the hardware parts that we had used are standard maker parts that we can find everywhere. Another thing that we, we need to face is the certification. So um, during the process, we, we did, uh, for example, on the single board computer, we did seven designs to adapt uh, the requisites to the certification specifications here. But uh, what we learn is that in this approach, we can use local parts, and in the end, we have a super low cost ventilator. Usually a ventilator here costs something like $20,000, and we can do a ventilator using this approach with less than 1,000 bucks. All right, yeah, um, thank you very much. That makes a lot of sense. Um, there's many, many, many more questions coming up, uh, but we don't have, I'm afraid that we don't have that much time. Um, would you guys keep be available at the discussion room so people can, can address these questions uh, um, on the site? Um, that will be great. Um, all right. Yeah. Okay. So we will head. So um, Marcel and I will head over to the discussion room. All right. We'll definitely hang out for another half an hour or so there. And so please feel free to engage with us directly. All right. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Great. Uh, amazing project. Uh, very exciting. Thanks a lot. Thank you, guys. Okay. Meet you later. Yeah. We're we'll we'll heading over to the discussion room. Yeah. Everyone that has questions, please uh, head to the discussion room. Um, they will be there to address your questions and all of those that are still pending, please go there. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation.